Hello? Where am I? Hello? Oh, mute. Oh. Hi. Who's the cat? This is Pi. <laughs> say, say it again. What's the name? Pi. Like, pie, pie. like a baked pie. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Can you hear me? I can hear you, Steve. Yes. All right. And see you. All right. Oh, you just put it on mute, I think. I think you just muted. Show your butt, to everybody. <laughs> How are you, Joe? Oh, good, good. It's, it, there's the lilacs are blooming uh, around the house. That's nice. Okay. Yeah, mine too. It's lovely. Yeah. And uh, and down at the community garden, they've turned on the water, so people will start planting things. Oh, good. Hi, Dan. Hi. How are you, Hello. Liza? I'm good. How are you? Hey, Joe. Hey, Steve. I'm good. I like the, your cat. <laughs> she, she shows up a lot. <laughs> she just like knows that the video goes on and she's like, oh, let me join too. Last couple of days, we've had a fox running around the backyard. Really? Chasing the squirrels. Wow. It, it may be a very clever fox, but it's not good at catching squirrels. <laughs> no better than a regular dog at catching squirrels. Hi, Melissa. Hi. We have a, a, a fox at our front door. We have one of these like ring type cameras. So oh. you often see it like running back and forth and there's a bird feeder at Surrey and 10 on. I don't know if it, I don't think it has much success, but. That's, yeah, that, that's where ours is. Ours is lurking around the bird feeder, watching the squirrels that are loitering there. So wild to have sun this time of day. Uh -huh. <laughs> we didn't put up that shade in the office, did we? Well, we're not usually in here at this time. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we, I think Brian's coming, but I don't he know. Was here, is he gone? Steve was here. He seems to have disappeared. Oh, he was. He's muting. He's back. I gotta go on mute for that. Can you guys hear it? Uh, oh, there we are. I see. I see. You hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you. Yes, you can. Good. Yeah. <clears throat> Photos a little bit. A little blurry in the video. Yeah. yeah. That's not the photo. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> you're feeling it. You're a little blurry today. Yeah. <laughs> I can relate to that. <laughs> well, should we keep waiting or do we have enough people, you think? One, two, three. I think we have enough people. Okay, let's call this meeting to order then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it is. What is it? Seven oh four. I have seven oh seven. Is that wrong? Oh, seven oh four. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> my computer is fast. Like my computer could be very slow. My computer is really old. <laughs> oh, it's right on. All right. Uh, well, we don't have any minutes. We'll do those next time. So we're gonna skip that one. Um, news about Concord Farms and farmers. Anybody? It was a very nice event. Finally, <laughs> springtime. 
I know. It, yeah. Is everybody a little worried about the heat this yeah it's yeah. summer tomorrow spring yeah. today spring summer yeah yeah what happened to may showers <laughs> yeah we yeah. we planted the first tomatoes today and we've been irrigating in three fields early wow oh wow we started irrigating too Are they well working now? What's that? what was steve you have the well working now? Hopefully by the end of today. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it, it, they were bringing the crane back in to lift it out to replace oh, the, it, 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 Yeah. Hopefully. We had it, I mean, it was sort of, it, we had it on. It was sort of working, but the pressure wasn't high enough. So the, the pump broke? I don't, I don't know the whole details, but something fell out of the pump, it sounds like, or like got, like pinched. <laughs> Sorry. Some capacity. Do you know how many gallons per minute you're getting? No, Brian would know. I don't know. Really? My head. I know we were given a range of what it's supposed to come out and we had, you know, our system set up for a certain PSI. Uh, and I, it was not hitting that. That's all I know. <laughs> right. But it seems to be that it was a problem with the pump. It wasn't a problem with like the well. So it wasn't like it was like sucking air. So that was good. Um, Brian would know the details. He's coming. He just texted. But yeah, it's uh, hopefully, hopefully soon. Hopefully. I'm not, we're, we're starting farmer's markets this weekend. I'm not particularly looking forward to it being 85 and going into the city and sitting in a parking lot. So I'm, I'm not ready. <laughs> you got Chip? Hey, Chip. Hey. Emily. Emily. Emily's joining us. That's nice Brian. Hi, Emily. Hi. Hi, Brian. Hi, Cara. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Hi, Brian. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> I've been meeting with my uh, wife's coworkers. So. <laughs> a party on the porch over there. <laughs> we were we were just talking about the the well. Oh right. <laughs> Do you know how many gallons per minute? Uh, so I think it's about uh, 110, 120. Um, but the problem, I, I don't quite understand what the problem is, but it appears to be a problem with the variable, variable speed control uh, where it's fluctuating. And so it works, but you know, the sprinkler will look great and then it'll, and then it'll look great. You know, so it, it, it fluctuates and, uh, the guy who was here, Frank, who was here today, didn't know how to fix it. So he has a tech guy who understands these newer uh, variable speed controls and will be here next week, hopefully. We can still irrigate, but <clears throat> we used to have. It gets 110 gallons per minute? Yeah. That's wild. Well. Yeah, that's oh, what but, I but when you think I about. Thought, wow. When you think about the pump that we used to use out of the river, it was probably a couple hundred gallons per minute. Well, I know, but ours, the most we could get was 30. Yeah, ours is 30, oh. I think. I think it's hard to get that much. Like, I definitely can pump a lot more from the river, but I wasn't even told to expect anywhere near. I was, like, aiming for 30 as my minimum. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, I mean, I, Oh, wow. We weren't told to expect a lot, but we, we got over 100 too out of our well. So I think that was the goal, is that we were hoping to be able to completely uh, switch over our irrigation system from the diesel pump that pumps out of the river uh, to a well. So uh, there's, there's trade-offs. You know, um, but you know the, the the pump out of the river required 
you have to prime it. Um, and, you know, where our pump is located, it was like our suction line was like 200 feet. And so if it lost prime, you would sit there pumping the primer and you didn't really know if it was ever going to prime, you know, you were hoping. Uh, but you could actually spend the rest of your life there and not uh, know. That's a long run. That's a long run. And it's six inches. So, yeah, it's a six inch suction line. Uh, and so I'm very happy to be done with that mm -hmm. if this works to our advantage. The uh, thing I keep in mind with a well, it'll draw 100 or more gallons a minute. But the more you draw, the faster the velocity coming through the screens is and the more likely you are to plug them up. So we try not to maximize it too much of the time. Yeah. We had that problem with the thing on ours. I mean, ours is a much probably smaller setup than yours, but with the uh, um, the flow ebbing and flowing like that, and they, they put a fairly reasonable size expansion to tank on it, which seemed to yeah. moderate that. Well, ours isn't working quite the way that we hoped it would, uh, but we, we're still hopeful. Who, who do you work with on the controls? What's that? Who, who works with the controls? So, I mean, it's Frank Sullivan, but he has some guy who's his tech guy uh, who is supposed to come by next week to try to iron out this fluctuation and uh, uh, so we'll see. I don't know. Is Wilmington Pump come into the picture at all? What's that? Wilming, Wilmington Pump. No, not that I heard of. Mm -mm. Oh, okay. I do know that we dealt with many for many years with Jim Peeler who's down on kind of the South shore. Uh, and I think he's extremely knowledgeable, um, but I think he's very busy. Um, but uh, I think he knows what he's doing. So uh, especially with farm irrigation, because that's been his deal for since he's been in business. Uh, so I don't know if it would have been better if we had gone with him uh but we always felt that we were chasing after him and you know uh yeah. having a difficulty getting being getting somebody right. to be responsive you know but that's that's everybody nice to deal with people that want your business it's true yeah <laughs> So it, it's been dry though. Yeah, this wind has yeah. really dried it quick. I'm kind of happy with the dry. Oh, compared to last year. After last year. Oh yeah, <laughs> Jesus, that's terrible. If you get your pump working. <laughs> yeah, well. Yeah. We have we have Plan B, but I don't even want to go there. <laughs> Back to the river. Yes. <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to prime two hundred feet of line. No, I don't want to do it. You ever do it for the engine uh, vacuum? What's that? You ever do it with a vacuum from the engine? To prime it? Yeah. No, those are really expensive. Well, there, there's cheap ones, but uh, so we have we have just a regular like a primer. Yeah, that's uh, but the ones the you know it's, it's like seven hundred, eight hundred dollars for for a, a primer like an uh, electric primer running off the battery. There's ones that run off the muffler. Um, and we have those for some of the smaller pumps, but I've never seen one that was big enough to, uh, or, or uh, I, I, I haven't seen one that would work with our bigger pump. How much head do you have? Uh, 
you mean sucking out of the river or no. uh, not almost nothing? With a shop a back feet. door? What's that? With a shop back door? I don't know. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I never experimented. I basically just sat there and pumped you it. Could run, you could run that off of, off your uh, car battery. Right. Yeah, if you have an inverter or something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's true. It's a six inch line though, so. Yeah, yeah. but it just take longer, that's all. Wow. As long as the head isn't too much, why it should do it, I would think. Yeah. Well, if we have to go, if we have to go back there, uh, I will investigate that. But I don't, I don't even want to, I want to sell that pump. <laughs> right. For a lot of money. I don't think no, anyone here is buying. <laughs> we have that vertical speed control. It's been great. I mean, if we want to run a drip line, we can. If we want to run the big gun, gun we can. Yeah. You know, all you do is turn the valve on. That's what we're, I mean, it's been convenient, except we have this fluctuation where one minute the sprinkler is like, looks great. And then next it's like, yeah. and then it goes back and then. But so. you have an expansion tank? Uh, we uh, we have expansion tanks. Uh, we have a tiny little expansion tank. Oh, maybe that's the trouble. You don't want expansion tanks because you have to house them and you have to, you know. Oh, you need that to take up the. the that's a cushion. Yeah. Well, the first the first people that uh, designed the system said we needed some ridiculous amount of capacity of expansion tanks. And we're like, you know, that's crazy uh, because do we have to keep those from freezing because we're using the same well to, uh, or the, yeah, the same well to, uh, to provide our greenhouse with water. Um, and where do we house them? They can't just be sitting outside, I don't think, without rusting or, I mean, I guess they can be fiberglass. Well, no, I was just outside all right, but we don't use it in the winter. Yeah. Same with yeah. us. Our, our, we have a tank outside, but we turn it off in the winter. We actually unscrew ours and bring it inside in the winter time. <laughs> oh, it <doesn't> freeze. <laughs> well, pretty soon it will never freeze again because of global warming. <laughs> uh, and so we'll be all set. It and we'll be growing guava. <laughs> I put our cucurbits out on the hay cart too early and the next morning they were looking pretty sad. <laughs> yeah. Our, our tomatoes got zapped, like just the wind, not the cold. It was the wind. Yeah, it's been rough, yeah. We planted our first squash cukes yesterday and beans. Plugs of seed. Plugs. And uh, we've got two corn in now. Um, one tomato, lots of lettuce, four, three or four, lots of arugula. So do you have things to bring to the farmer's market, Liza? Like, Nettles. Nettles. <laughs> Nettles. Probably some asparagus. Asparagus, maybe. Yeah, asparagus. Maybe some rhubarb. sorrel. Some sorrel, rhubarb. You know, asparagus will wake up this weekend. We're going to bring a lot of plants, a lot of seedlings. Hmm. When's the first farmer's market? Saturday. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You can tell I'm really excited. Yeah. <laughs> Such enthusiasm to set the season. Exactly. <laughs> it's going to be. I think I'd be more enthusiastic if it wasn't going to be like 85. Oh. I'm just like, I'm not quite there. Like, you prefer 40? No. <laughs> Can we have today? How about today? Like a nice, like 65. Right, halfway in between. Yeah. How about some spring? I like some spring. 
Well, where will this be, the farmer's market? So our first one is in Union Square in Somerville. Oh, OK. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see. It's, it's always a relearning on how we do this every year. So. <laughs> where the new staff and the old staff try to remember how we do things. So it'll be good. Did Dave said, say the van worked okay? Yeah, I drove it earlier this week too, it was running. Good. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of other things that break all the time. Um, does anybody else have anything in the news about farms or farmers? All right. Well, let me, let's move on to our next agenda item, which is the quick spring forum movie night recap, which I think went well, despite being very cold. Uh, <laughs> I think we, we can all thank Steve and the entire Vero family for their hospitality and their yes. lovely popcorn. And it was, it was really nice. And it was really a good idea to bring the heaters in the tent, Steve. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I think people enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. I was I was pretty impressed that people really did come and really did bring blankets. I think they I was <laughs> impressed. <clears throat> it was a bit surreal to um, some of the film segments had wind going over the fields, mm -hmm. and there was wind just you know battering the tent. Yeah. It was like <laughs> stereo. <laughs> We felt, it was felt like a little like 3D, no, what is that, 4D, fourth dimension movie yeah. effects. <laughs> yeah, it's been windy ever since, too. Yeah. Not today. No, it's fun to see all the films, new and old. Yeah, they, they were coming out full. Cool. Yeah. Are there more now? The sound were very good. Well, that actually brings us to our next agenda item, which is the quick farm. Concord Farms video part two update, which is, yes, there is more in the in the tank. Uh, Tori has filmed at least part of Saltbox. I think she has to go back and do just some like talking head pieces with them. Um, and I think Melissa and Lise are in touch with her to start filming something this month. Yeah, she was gonna come next week. Great. And I believe the other two are going online at some point. Um, they just are, they were really backed up with, um, yeah the town meeting stuff. Um, they are short staffed. So that the other two should be on YouTube soon. And then there will be more on YouTube after that. So <clears throat> that's nice. Um, and I think after that, Dan, you guys are in June. Right. So think about something you might like to film. <laughs> <laughs> um, will we be able to put, will they be on the a link to the YouTube, could we do it from the ag, our yeah. like informal website and, and the town one maybe? Yeah, we can definitely um, do on, that. Like people at, like on Instagram had asked to yes. like, where to find them. Um, yes, I can update, I can email Aaron to update the town ag day, ag committee webpage and I can do it ourselves on our ag day one. Yeah, nice. when, once they go up there. I think she was gonna yeah. make up a playlist so they were like all together. So oh, perfect. Yeah. Cool. Um, so yeah. So then we lead to agenda in item number five, which is the quick Concord Cooler Festival recap. Oh yeah. So we um we did get it together to get a booth for the Concord Cooler Festival, which was their first one ever doing it. Um, so I manned it for the first two hours, and Joe manned it for the next two hours, mm -hmm. uh, which I think was. I think it was good we were there. Um, I think they're gonna try to make it an annual thing every year. Um, I think I, I got a lot of questions that were, I was, I was happy to be there to answer them. <laughs> I guess I should say that. I feel like the, uh, the farming perspective is, was something that was perhaps needed at this event, um, that it wasn't all just tech. So I think that, uh, I think it was good we, made the effort to have a booth there. And I think if we can in the future and they do it again, it would be good to also try to do something and have our faces out there. Um, I think yeah. it's just, it's a, 
it was a it was a pretty tech heavy there, I mean there was lots of other stuff there that was great there was a lot of kids um, stuff from the high school um, you know pollinator gardens stuff like the natural resources committee and stuff like that but there was also a heavily heavy a lot of like improvements to your house and like technology stuff mm -hmm. um, so mm -hmm. I think it was nice to have uh, have us there too I think in previous years I I, I think I was at one and actually part of the part of the booth, it was all, it was more about gardening, you know, how not to have a lawn, for example, um, in order to reduce your carbon footprint. But, um, so Liza, could you give an example of a question, some of the questions you got? I got a lot of questions about solar panels and um, agrovoltaics, which is growing in between solar panels. I got a lot of questions about, uh, I also got a lot of questions about the jumping worms, <laughs> um, which I was glad I'd done some research beforehand. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think a lot of questions about sort of like the trade-offs between tech being used for land and farming being used for land. Um, so I, right. I think that was definitely a, a thing. Um, you know, did you have, did you get a lot of questions like that or were you, what was, your experience. Well, well, I think you, you had prepared the, uh, the the table that I was at, which had a preset of questions that they could ask, yeah. and and I had a cheat sheet for what the answers were, so <laughs> it went smoothly for me. <laughs> Good. <laughs> it was well prepared. I, oh, nice. I, that is good to know that that's like on people's mind, like uses of town owned land, like that people are thinking that solar panels. I think it, there was also a lot of questions about the, the, um, the rail trail conversion, like whether, you know, that was obvious, that was at town meeting and like stuff, like questions about that, questions about like, you know, we, we have the land that's off of the reformatory trail still, Peter Spring, that property. So there was a lot of questions about how we felt about that and sort of stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it was, a lot of it was, uh, I think because of the people who maybe attended this event were very into alternative energy. So that was something on their mind, so. Um, well, I have a little problem seeing a lot of value to growing crops uh, under solar panels because solar panels and crops are both interested in the uh, use of the sun's rays and <laughs> if the solar panels take them well, there's not much left. I think that's, that's a big question mark yeah there. there. It also affects the, the way that I mean the solar panels has to be held up by something and so it affects the way that your uh, equipment can actually yeah uh, you know access mm. the land underneath and so either you need specialized equipment, specialized crops, um, you know. Well, what, what sunlight do you get? Well, you might get some. I think it depends. There's all different kinds of spacing. There's a, there's a big thing out at UMass where they've been sort of working on this. There, it, a lot of the stuff is theoretical based out of more the Southwestern <laughs> United States where obviously shade is more important um, to growing than it is here, uh, but yeah, mm -hmm. there's a, there's competing land interest, which is, yeah. So I'm glad we were there and able to talk to people. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> I tried, Steve. <laughs> I do think, I think they're gonna to try to make it a, an annual event. I mean, this was pretty driven by Mothers Out Front, I think, um, in coordination with the Town Sustainability Department. Um, it was my understanding of how this went. So I think uh, there likely will be a repeat event next year. Um, so something to probably keep on our radar. Should we talk about Ag Day? Yeah. <laughs> Another yeah. quick item. <laughs> I'm hoping this is quick. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, Melissa and I met earlier today with um, the Concord Police Department. Uh, we were supposed to meet with Chris too, but he got held up with another meeting. Um, so quick update on where we are in planning. The town has approved it. We're on the town calendar. We're on the police department calendar. Um, so we are on for September 10th. Um, I think we just have to figure out a little bit of what are the things that need to happen in timelines and when those need to happen and maybe a little delegation of who's gonna do what. Um, 
uh, the library, I know last, um, at our last meeting, I was supposed to reach out to the library again and see if they were gonna do the book event on the same day. And they decided they were gonna move it back to their original spring. So they're having it in June, um, but they are hoping, no promises, but hoping to do a mini book event in coordination with Ag Day. So do like a smaller thing on the lawn um, on September 10th. No promises, they weren't 100% sure they could pull it off, but they really did enjoy having a little bit of that synergy. So they were gonna, they were gonna try. Um, and we did uh, reserve the bookstore community window for August 22nd through August 29th. That's the only week they had. Um, so it's a little bit before Ag Day, but probably maybe good timing to just remind people it's coming up. Um, and if anybody has any interest in helping with that in terms of collecting items and helping set up that display, please speak now. <laughs> Otherwise, it's going to be me. <laughs> well, we yeah. definitely have items that could be used in those pictures I found from another year, like some of our pick your own signs. I don't know how they like hung them. And we have like a color crate and like we could definitely come up with stuff. Great. Um, awesome. I We have a little bit of stuff. We don't have a lot of stuff, though. Most of our stuff is we, not. We could, probably, we, we could probably find a little stuff. Great. Yeah. Um, we should think about, I know, and like Happy did that and um, Shrimp did that great poster last year. That helps with the, well, we need uh, to think about a poster for the event. And then also that like features largely in the window being connected to the, to the event. So I don't know, poster would be another thing to yeah. delegate. Well, if you guys all have, you... sorry, Emily. Oh, I was just going to ask, could you use that image that you used for the movie night? I mean, to me, it's sufficiently oh. abstract and universal and, or potentially universal, you know, just getting, getting across a message of um, things growing. We could. The, Maybe the that would make it easier. One? The tomato picture? You mean no, the, the uh, sprouts or what? Um, yeah, yeah. The, the flat. They were, there were flowers growing. Yeah. Oh, that, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, we could. It's... Well, I was just thinking shortcut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. good. <laughs> you, you, use something you've already, you've already created. Yeah. Less happy has any other cool cards. I know. Exactly. Well. Not to put you on the spot. <laughs> Is Happy muted? You're Happy muted, muted, Happy, if you... I don't know if she's talking. Oh, but... yeah, I think she is muted. She said no. Oh, okay. Said no. <laughs> Does that work? Sure. Oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it might be interesting to try to continue that image, which seemed to be very um, accepted yeah. by the community at large in some form. But um, I will be looking for other uh, agricultural related artwork in the next few weeks, and I'll let you know when I okay. find something. Yeah. Sounds great. Okay. Awesome. Excellent. Yeah, that would be cool to have that ready by then. So yeah, if everybody does have stuff that they could, I can go, I, I, I have time to set up the display. I'm not amazing at doing this stuff, but I think I can hopefully do well, it. <laughs> it, would, it would be fun to, if everybody contributed maybe one picture mm. of some sort. That would be great. A few related whatever is what we find around. But it, would be nice if everybody's represented by something. Like I have an antique like corn planter that's fairly small that might be a good thing. That would be cool. Yeah. Sorry, so I'll help you with it. I'm not I'm not volunteering for the whole thing, but I'll volunteer to help you. Thanks, Happy. <laughs> 
mainly it's collecting the stuff I think is the the piece that I'm a little worried about I'm not super worried about setting it up and taking it down I'm more worried about having enough stuff and having it look like everybody's present we'll, um, we'll go and get a bag yeah. and put it in okay <laughs> we have loads of dairy stuff that is conquered agricultural history but not related to farmers markets especially right but i do have i think a asparagus cutter and mm. maybe some bog shoes for the horses that'd be fun if i can find them again yeah one thing we have an old school asparagus buncher with the i don't know what it what it is it's just a it looks like a piece of wood with two little like round hook things that you use to bunch asparagus and an old-fashioned asparagus knife that would be awesome cutter thing yeah. we could don't we could have that that'd be cool that's that sounds like about the same thing we have that's awesome <laughs> we all have that same stuff it must be well you you uh realize that a little over 100 years ago uh, Concord was the asparagus capital of the country. I was just oh, going to yeah. ask about that. Wow. Well, wow. I think we still are. <laughs> <laughs> In quality, yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Massachusetts. <laughs> no, just Concord. Just Concord. <laughs> well, they, they did. That when my the, uh, uh, grandson likes asparagus, he had it for the first time today. <laughs> now, when the uh, disease came into asparagus back in the uh, 30s, I guess it would have been, they uh, had the extension asparagus research station in Concord. Hey. Now, I think that maybe was the start of the Middlesex County Extension Office on uh, Everest Street. Oh, yeah. Wow. I forgot that was there. <laughs> the other thing about the bookstore window is the bookstore does, it's a lot of, it's a lot of books. So they'll do like farming books and stuff. So it, it actually, I think will fill up fast. So that's great if we have like a bunch of stuff, but in the pictures, it'd be, yeah, it'd be fun to have something from everybody, but that's probably about as much as we can. It it fills up quickly because of all the books, yeah. So, great. Yeah. <laughs> I think you're right too. If we have the poster kind of ready by then, that that that's like a nice vertical thing too to take yeah. up some space, so that'd be cool. Um, well, cool, thanks guys. Um, in terms of our other to-do list for Ag Day, I, we have to talk to Chris about some, hopefully getting the town of Concord to pay for the police and the um, light plant setting up the banner. Um, I think we have to talk to the light plant about what potential weeks, we can, if we can make sure we get that week beforehand. <laughs> I can. I can email them again. I, I had filled out that application last year. Yeah. Um, and they happened to have our week free, so that was good. But you're right, it's like first come, first serve, I think. So I'll email them. I think so too. So let's get on that. And um, I'm going to email Chris to make sure we can get some of these costs covered. <laughs> it, 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 in terms of the uh, police, uh, the town always has covered that, and I think that's just precedent to be followed. I think so too. I think there was one year there was a question mark about it, but I think pretty much every year they have said they would cover it. So we just want to make sure beforehand. <laughs> well, that that one is fine, I think, because the guy we met with today said that like the ag committee wasn't specifically in their invoicing. So yeah, Ron Ron seemed pretty sure he would just send it yeah. to the town. <laughs> um. In terms of meeting with the police today too, they were like, last year was great. I don't, they didn't really have any pickups. Um, They're planning to do exactly what they did last year. Um, having Steve's truck block that entrance is really good for them. Um, so it looked like just a repeat. Um, 
And yeah, I guess the only other thing is um, including in like the nonprofits and getting registration forms out to farms and stuff like that. I think we did that in like end of July, is that right, last year? I think it might make sense to do it, especially for the nonprofits earlier. Okay. Because then people go, go away for the summer and then they want their back and it's ag day. All right. So. Would you like us to ask Leonard if he'll come back again? I would. He was a huge okay. music, yes. I was what everybody else I, think? Leonard was a huge He was a hit. Yeah. He was a big hit. I thought he was awesome. <laughs> He was. I'll definitely ask him. And he's got so many. He's got so many different variations of everything, so he can bring something different. So that was so cool, and the kids loved it. So that was super fun. It was. It was not just the kids that loved it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was cool. Um. I can, I think I did the registration for the nonprofits last year and I don't mind doing that again. So um, I'll volunteer myself. <laughs> um, does anybody want to handle the farm registration? Well. What's that? Uh. Hmm? What's involved there? I think I don't. I think Happy did it last year. I think it's sending out the little form that asks everybody how much space they need, whether or not they're coming, right, right. and um, and asks for the. I think it was twenty five dollars we've asked before per space. Does that sound right? Okay, yeah. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> she did a good job. She did a great job. <laughs> <laughs> See if you can get 50. No. <laughs> we'll encourage people to come. Can we raise it to 30? You guys want to raise it? I feel like last year with the town doing the banner, like it doesn't make us able to pay for the banner. And it, it really doesn't it. help us. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, we'll raise it to 30 just because of inflation. <laughs> because of COVID, we'll raise it to 30. <laughs> inflation, right? So who benefits how much from that? I think we just use it to print the posters. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, it helps. Yeah. With something. The posters, unfortunately, are not cheap. Yeah. Um, yeah. We can also ask, Chip has mentioned a couple of times that if we propose it to Stone Soup that they could help with some printing. Yeah. So okay. they just like to, uh, we just would get the okay from him ahead of time so we can check with the other Stone Soup folks and then have them receive the invoice from the printing if we get the go ahead so we could do I, that too if I think it's a pretty short thing yeah um, yeah I think last year we um, did some we paid for the printing of the um, the update of the farm guide yeah guide the conquered farms I don't think we did anything for the um, farmers market last year that's correct I think chip I think the um I think we use some of the funds in our ad committee account to pay for the posters. Yeah, I believe. Why don't we sort of look at uh, in June what our budget might be and then we can see what we really need. That sounds good, Happy. I will. I can ask to see what how much is in the account. Is Stone Soup likely to happen this year or no? No. The feeling is that uh, the restaurants are stressed out too much to take on something else is one of the main things. Um, I, I'm 
just trying to think of the other thing. I think last year, Happy, I don't remember his name, but he fixed the banner for vegetables. Yeah. Do you think he would do it again? I don't okay. know. I have it. It's at the mm -hmm. farm. Okay. Yeah, it's at Hutchins. Okay. It, it's it's the it, man in uh, West Concord who has the sign. Company. It's Bill. What's his name? Bill. Bill. I think it's Crosby. Bill Crosby. Not Bill Crosby. I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, he's on that that side street. Office yeah, it's like the Herald Street. Mm. I think. I mean, he was very very nice to do that last year. Uh, but yeah, the banner's with me and Brian. It's in the office. <laughs> Hopefully clean. Yeah, I've seen it. You've seen it. <laughs> it's nicely rolled up. Oh, it's yeah. on the floor. And I think the other question was uh, if we expanded the... Um, uh, what am I thinking of? The veggie racing? Is, our, is the veggie racing track still in okay shape? Mm -hmm. yes. um, I think after last year we were we were talking a little bit about expanding that a little bit just getting more wheels and also maybe having like the veggie racing and then having another tent that's just veggie decorating um and yeah, like that yeah, set up. yeah. Um, how do people feel comfortable with that idea yeah <clears throat> Decorating is an interesting idea. You could make all kinds of figures. And... Yeah, we last year we ran out of wheels pretty quick, so uh, the kids were very much enjoying them. <laughs> so, uh, so we switched to veggie decorating, and that was also actually kids all enjoyed that very much too. We had lots of decorated squashes and eggplants and very hysterical looking carrots. So. <laughs> Does it make sense to try to source the wheels and the axles ahead of time? Yeah, I was actually thinking about that. Um, I have I have all the stuff still at the farm. We have, so we still have some tubing, um, but the other stuff we probably need to get ahead of time. Um, I know uh, Happy's husband, he, he actually sent me an email with like exactly where to buy everything. Um, uh, so we do, we have the list of sources. Um, I know he also very carefully like made sure everything fit ahead of time. Um, so we weren't, didn't get any surprises the day of. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, so I, I think that's something. all just dowels and wooden wheels? What's the tubing? The tubing is like the stoppers on the side of the, um, so the wheels don't fly off the dowels. Keep the wheels from falling off. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I have all the dimensions from him. Um, so yeah, that's probably, I can look into that and how much that will cost us. Are we looking for someone to volunteer to lead that segment? I may have a friend who is, she was there last year, my friend Amy, who ran it with my brother. <laughs> she's, she's actually, she had so much fun, she's interested in doing it. <laughs> oh, great. So I'm happy to let her, if you all are happy to let her. <laughs> all we need is Brian to uh, drive the- Just let it. Yeah, Brian, are you okay driving the uh, veggie racer over? I think so. <laughs> how how long is that? How long has the um, veggie racing hat been going on? Like, is it almost ten years? Is it that now? track has just gone from strength to strength. I can't believe it's ten years. I don't no. think it's been. It's probably it's around six or so. Michael built it. Yeah. Well, how many? I would say about six years. Yeah. Six. That sounds right. Yeah. That sounds right. Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's about five years longer than Brian <laughs> predicted it would last. <laughs> so, and, and it's just, it's practically become, you know, a go to part of the market, right? Oh, yeah. It was. Yeah. 
it, I think it's it, very it, close to being the star of Ag Day. Yeah, I was going to say <laughs> it's definitely a popular event. Yeah. Uh, start breeding vegetables for their aerodynamic quality. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do we do have a lot of decorations left over from last year, so really I think the cost of that is really the wheels and the dowels and that the, the, that piece. We don't um, we had we had a lot of stuff for decorations, so that's that's good. Um, the wheels are expensive. Okay. And the guy that we've been buying them from is in Maine, and he's a yeah. type guy, and so he knows exactly what we want and all that, which is interesting. I haven't really found any cheaper ones online anywhere, but you're welcome to search. Okay. Yeah, well, I have to make the wheels out of vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> I'm carrots. Just... Giant carrots. 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 And carrots like Slices of corn. <laughs> The good art really? are $30. <laughs> As a matter of safety, should we be thinking about windshields? <laughs> Airbags. Airbags. <laughs> right. um, this does bring up uh, volunteers. So last year, we, we did have some volunteers uh, help, but we could definitely have used some more. Um, we got the... Yeah. Chris Carmody gave us the name of the person who coordinates the high school, the Concord Carlisle High School, like senior volunteer stuff. Um, I think it's just at the beginning of the school year, so we might be able to get some of them potentially to help with this. Um, I don't remember where we left off with that. I, I don't, did we actually talk to her or did we just say we were gonna talk to her? I think we thought it was too early, which- Yeah. It is, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that it's it might be tricky with it being in September. Like kids aren't going to be scheduling it now. You might yeah. try talking to her now, since you had that list of people who are interested. If they can plan their summer so that they know that that weekend they're going to be busy. Yeah, I mean, I think we could re we could at least reach out to. Um, the oh, coordinator. I, Chris mentioned that sometimes some of the seniors want to like get they have they have like required hours that they want to get them done with quickly so they don't have to think about them. So oh. we might be able to snag some people kids that way. Um, is, it's just sort of helpful. Is it Susan Frommer? I do not remember. <laughs> oh, well, I mean the seniors do a, a day like June first mm. for us, and it's this woman Susan Frommer that organizes it. So. Cool. I can double check. I don't remember her name. I have, I have her email address though. Um, I can reach out to her though and just see what, just tell her about it and then we can go from there. Um, so anything else about Ag Day? We we need people to measure and assign spots. Yes. Um, no, were, were you Emily's assist? Were you and Emily working on that last year? We did. <laughs> Do you have an interest in doing it again? I'm marking the spaces, sure. Would, yeah. I would love to do that with Emily again. <laughs> I, I and I would I it's it's mutual. <laughs> the feeling <laughs> of getting up at eight in the morning and it's actually a lot of fun as everything oh. comes together. We shoo the cars off the street. <laughs> I, I don't mind making the map again um, for assigning spots. So if you guys don't mind being the people there to can we use the same map? The folks. <laughs> What'd you say, Steve? Can we use the same map? Pretty much. I don't think we're planning on moving. I mean, if all the same farms show up, it, it's just moving the nonprofits around. That's all that it is. Yeah. Okay, Liza will make map. <laughs> And you, what do we have here? Joe and Emily are gonna do the measures. 
I mentioned to the pollinator committee the possibility of having a table there and they seemed interested. Yeah, they, they were supposed to have one there last year and they canceled at the last minute. But they are all- They, get, they get a second chance. <laughs> we're not gonna bar them, no. <laughs> That's it, you canceled, you're out. <laughs> no. Um, You're extinct. <laughs> oh. No, of course. They are, they are on the list. They will get an invite. Um, OK. Is there anything else to be said about acting? What's the date again? September 10th. All right. Moving on. I have next on the agenda the Concord Community Garden Outreach because Joe had brought this up as sort of a potential, how do we maybe interact more with the Concord Community Gardens? Yeah. Having brought it up, I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know. The community gardens have a lot of I don't know, amateur gardeners in it, and they ought to be interested in things agricultural. So there, there might be a way to do something. I, I don't know what it might be. Is there like a coordinator for each garden? How does the structure of those? Yeah. Work? Yeah. There, there, I, I think, um, I think it's, it is decentralized by garden as opposed to Apart, apart from, I'm trying to think, when we fill out our forms and pay our fee, it does go to some central location, not the NRC, but maybe. But yes, there are individual garden coordinators, um, Hugh Cargill and um, in West Concord, Cousins Field, and then um, East, East Concord, East, uh, any, anyway, I, I have um, pretty regularly passed on to the coordinator at Hugh Cargill, where I am, emails, you know, notices about events, and I was th really thrilled to see at least two Hugh Car Cargill gardeners at the movie night. Um, but apart, and back in the day when we had garden tours, one year the community gardens were on the garden tours, but for the public as opposed to, you know, I think Joe, you're thinking maybe farmers could help home gardeners, you know, give some tips, one thing and another. Or or the home gardeners could help the farmers in some way. Ah. <laughs> yeah, I like how he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> so does each um does each garden then have like an email list? Like cuz it would be nice like yes. or we could just send it to the coordinators like you've been sending it to that one but maybe we should really be sending our event or other like info to all of them. Right. I, I can speak of, of, of the Rogers Community Garden over there next to, next to uh, Ricky Marshall's. Uh, that one uh, has a coordinator and she has an email list of all of the participants. Um, and m might be able to be convinced to make use of that for, uh, for greater purposes, for other purposes. Yeah, I was just, it might be nice to have just the emails of the coordinators of the different gardeners. And then if we have particular things that like, I mean, ag day, but like, you know, another movie night or, or, uh, or even just like information, like sometimes we get stuff that, uh, you know, we send out to our list, I guess, that's sort of like related to farming, like maybe the coordinators would like to be on some list like that, you know, um, if it's like a, 
I'm just trying to think of like an example, like something that's like coming up that's like a legislative thing that maybe some like these are people who are interested in gardening and farming, maybe they would like to know about it or something like that. Yeah. Eliza, you could tell them all about jumping worms. I know. <laughs> the reason this came up is actually the the uh, one of the community gardens sent out a little pamphlet, I think, to their um, participants about jumping worms. Oh yeah. And then I was tracking down who wrote the pamphlet. And anyway, it was. Was, was it Michelle Wiggins? Yeah, it was. <laughs> yes. Because she, she went to a whole conference, a whole, was it a NOFA conference? It was like a two day thing on jumping worm, or maybe it was UMass. There was one at a UMass. They had a one day like yeah. online conference about it. Yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> but definitely, I was thinking like information like that, where maybe it's something that, uh, you know, or, or if we get information about something from UMass that we feel like is worth sharing about yeah, have any of us seen them yes jumping worms yeah definitely i saw them last spring i mean last fall excuse me where at your at your garden at the community yeah wow has anybody seen it, it, really, it really feels like we're it's an invasion i don't know there's any cure for there's any remedy really did you keep them fenced in there? <laughs> I was going to say, but we're, we're putting up fences against the deer. I guess that's the plan. Make it a Individual fences. Oh. This is off topic. Has anybody seen Allium leaf miner? Say that again. Allium leaf miner. Steve, somebody, come on. You guys know no. what I'm talking about. Yeah. But we have you haven't not gone hunting yet. Haven't gone hunting, but. You've not seen them in your onions or your garlic? Yeah, we onions aren't out yet. And I haven't really looked at the garlic too close. Because this is a big deal. I mean, to my mind, it's a bigger deal than jumping worms. Uh, it could completely shut down, you know, leak production. But did they cut them off at the ground, or no? They're 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 maggots that that. Uh, oh, underground. Well, they're not. They're Get not. Inside, they, 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 like it's, it's like a leaf miner, like a chard, like a you know, like a spinach chard leaf miner. Uh, but they're they're. It sounds like they're devastating. They're they haven't quite gotten here yet, but they're close. They're in Massachusetts. They're in Connecticut. They're so I haven't seen them. I'm just curious. There was a seminar on those crops a couple months ago, and after you listen to that, you don't think you want to have anything to do with any of them. Well, that's what I mean. Anyway, I'll shut up now. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Off topic, Brian. <laughs> um, here's a thought on the community gardens. Um, it might be interesting, like next spring, when we have a, a presentation to give a history of the agricultural use of the land that was that's now community gardens. Mm. Kind of history of what it used to grow there, who used to grow things. That's cool. Yeah. I hear Cousins Field, and I, I think of Cousins as the greenhouse operator that used to do cut flowers. Is that Steve Burrell? Is that? Um, I believe that's correct, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that's, I can just barely think of that. Most people would not make any connection, but that would be something that might be of interest to the people who are using it now. And uh, we still have, um, uh, Anthony Rogers, who can tell all about the Rogers farm and what that was used for, if he was oh. so inclined. That could be fun. Cool. So that's a suggestion for next, you know, next spring. Yeah, that could be a cool topic. Yeah, and and I think East Quarter. That was the name I was struggling to to find. East Quarter. Well, I don't know the history, but. But that's a lot of that's a big space, um, so it would be fun to know it. 
Billy Kenny would know that history. Uh -huh. Well, I think Shimonis might. Uh, there was a lot of uh, Bedford Street was almost completely uh, Italian farmers until you got the Shimonis. And then uh, Earl Parks sold milk machines and raised strawberries. And beyond that was uh, uh, Clover and Daly poultry farms. A lot going on there. Apple orchard. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Would it make any sense, maybe for and maybe you've done something like this already for a spring forum to have like a, you know, more like a panel to um, sort of give suggestions, answer questions to sort of um, maybe focus it on on the on the gardens and on issues people would be having or trying to figure out how they're doing it if they it's their first time doing it or i mean i don't know maybe that sort of corresponds with previous spring forums but well, i think you will certainly have a lot of uh, independent interest in farming A lot of what? I think she said independent interest in farming, maybe? Yeah, like, you know, the man off the street, but he likes to grow cucumbers. And if he right. had a farming connection, we would be really happy to invite his neighbor who also likes cucumbers, you know. It's not just everybody who has a, a garden plot, but I think right. Well, that's true. Wow, you know, we have secrets. You know, often people come into the farm stand and talk about what's going on there with their tomatoes this year, or why yes. something didn't do well, or oh, yes, and they, something the rabbit ate. Yeah, they come right. to us for information that sometimes we don't have, and sometimes we do have. But interesting and we're like their um, psychologists you know we just want to talk about it sometimes i think we are their psychologists <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> all right not sort of it definitely is <laughs> well, let's get back to and go on to the next spring forum it sounds more interesting right now yeah i think that could be cool all right, well, um, I guess my question to, for just in general, wh where do you think I would get the email addresses for the coordinators of each garden? You think the town might have a list or the natural resource? Well, yeah, natural I'm, resource. I'm sure. And and I mean, I would I can certainly um, give you Rebecca Purcell, Michelle Wiggins and um, Kirsten, last name I don't remember, at Hugh Cargill can give you their addresses and they would be they they i'm sure could be a good starting point as well yeah. that'd be great i'm um, thank you i can i can give you the the people at, at the rogers community garden cool yeah just the coordinators or whoever's the like the yeah. distributor of stuff and then maybe we could just get a little email list going and we'll figure out how best to use it does that sound okay i'm seeing nods <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Moving on. Lease. Concord Housing. National Park update. Oh, yeah. Um, it's not anything super positive. <laughs> but, um, so I met with the new um, park superintendent, Simone Monteleone, um, back in March, um, along with another member board member of the Concord Housing Foundation to kind of like find out what's going on with the housing on the park and um, what's going on with the GOA funding, the Great American Outdoors Act funding. 
So they, they got like $27 million to rehabilitate structures on the, the parkland, including a lot of housing. Um, unfortunately, it's all like, um, it's all earmarked as like single family houses. So even ones that were um, like two family or potentially two family are, because it was approved by Congress as all single family housing. Um, so, and, and also um, she's definitely like interested in getting the, the town to have like a long-term lease on, um, you know, like one of the houses and some of the farmland. Um, but um, like uh, does still want to get market rate for them. Um, like it's, it's in her budget that she needs to get market rate for them. So like, just as a point of comparison, like the, um, they range from like 2,700 to 3,700 a month. Um, so <laughs> if, um, you know, like the town would have to be willing to like, you know, eat it. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> um, but I do think that there is, uh, there is some like interest, at least at the housing foundation and like, oh, could, could the housing foundation maybe subsidize some of this? So like, I don't, you know, I don't know for sure that they would be able to, or, or, or would, um, that would be like a budget item for them. But, um, so yeah, there's, there's not like, um, there's definitely not like a hope for farm worker housing on, um, parkland. Um, I think there is like a potential for like, um, you know, with the town as um, sub leasing it from the park as a long term lease and then subleasing it to another farmer if the town or another organization were willing to like make up the difference in the cost for um, the rent. Like she, she was definitely interested in having a farmer live on the property and have like right now it's all yearly permitting. Um, so that's kind of tough if you're basing your operation there. Um, but if it was um, an entity like the town um, leasing from the park, it could be a much longer term lease. Um, so, so she, you know, does recognize that, you know, a, a longer lease for the farmer would incentivize investing in, um, in, the, in the property. So, um, yeah, so I don't have like much great news about it but that's kind of what came out of the that meeting and she's she's kind of like um i think there's like six houses in concord that are um getting rehabilitated um through goa funding um and there's a bunch of others in like um lincoln and lexington too um but just six of them were in concord and it also includes like um cardi barn um which is where first route used to be um, I like, I don't know if actually they had much space in that barn, but that is where First Root Farm was. And um, the Inferrara um, farm stand also is um, getting some of this funding um, to be rehabilitated, but you know, no farmer there. <laughs> so um, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so they're gonna they're gonna do repairs and rehab on these buildings yeah. with the expectation of doing this thing, but that could change. You know, the the bottom line is that they're doing the rehab. Yes, they're doing the rehab and for sure. Keeping those buildings actually, they're not gonna knock them down. No. So no, that's they're good. keeping the buildings. That's a, thing. <laughs> hmm? that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, because they could change their minds. You know, next yes. week. And um, the the housing, one of the guys on the housing foundation was suggesting that, you know, the ag committee should write them a letter and say, you know, you get all these free services from the town, like fire and <laughs> police and all that. So maybe they could give the town a break <laughs> on a lease. <laughs> well, uh, we, uh, I, I'm interested, you mentioned the 2700 figure. Mm -hmm. so we are renting two apartments in Maine for $2,700 a month for mm -hmm. our Jamaican workers. Mm -hmm. and we have to rent them for the 12 months 
to have them for the seven months we use them. And uh, I think as a fact of life, that should be priced into the product we sell and make it go that way. Uh, in the long run, we're working out plans now to build a, a duplex in Sudbury uh, for employee housing. And we're the uh, fire escape plans are different for the town and for OSHA, and we're trying to resolve that right now. <laughs> it mm -hmm. gets interesting as you get into some of these details, but um, I, th I think we should sell a product to support decent housing and wages for our employees. Like Steve, what kind of product? You mean like, do you have any idea of a suggestion of a product? What do you mean? Vegetables. You're saying like? I was thinking of pricing more than product. Oh, okay, in general, I see. The only problem with that is, you know, the pricing is your, you price your product the way that you price your product, but you're, Ultimately, you're competing with, you know, everybody else who I know selling the same product, including Whole Foods and Trader Joe's, and right. uh, and they're not quite as interested. Now, th this is the conundrum we're in now, and we've uh, since last July we've increased wages across the board about eight percent. And everybody knows what the cost is on fuel and fertilizer. Some of that's nearly doubled. And uh, we've been trying to decide how we're going to have to price things this year. But I think we have to make some substantial increases from last year. I mean, my, I guess my only concern about aggressive pricing is you end up um, eliminating a certain uh, category of customer. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think we have to feel this out. And uh, I mean, we went up a dollar on our asparagus this year. Um, but it could be kind of a marketing thing if you somehow are able to market, you know, that that you're, you know, including, you know, fair price, you know, um, housing for um, farmers, you know, could be kind of a marketing thing. Yeah, I mean, some restaurants do that where that's essentially part of their marketing. They include right. like, we're paying not restaurant wage, we're paying actual, you know, a better hourly rate. Yeah. yeah. No, it's, it's a problem to be. <laughs> yeah explored definitely do you i have a question do you sense that the people who shop at your stands or stores are patronizing you because they they want to keep you in business in other words they're they they're expecting to pay a premium and they gladly pay it is that something one could even establish well, as, as a, as... you you have that perception that a lot of people do that don't shop that things cost a premium, and we really try to keep competitive with uh, even uh, most of the supermarkets. We have to not venture too far from that, and I'm sure there's a mixture of uh, reasons people buy, and it's very difficult to put your finger on all of it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like we have a whole variety of customers and we don't want to alienate any of them. Uh, you know, there may be some of them that are interested in, you know, sustaining Hutchins Farm as an institution and some of them who are just looking for, 
you know, local tomatoes at that moment. Right. And, and I don't want to turn any of them away. Yeah. Certainly the prices in supermarkets have gone up, so that should they be, have. yeah. you can, that sort of should be figured into pricing. Yeah. Uh, I think the last one to want to raise prices, all the employees are anxious to raise them. And I've been keeping the brakes on, but when you see the increases in cost, and if you don't respond to that somehow or other, why well, you might not be here next year. Yeah, I think that's a reality too. I'm actually, I'm kind of curious about going into the farmer's market and seeing what people are pricing. Right. Because yeah. I, I don't have a great, like I can go to the grocery store right now, I can go over to Vero, but like I don't have a great sense of where we're at, um, where everybody's at. So I, th I think people have been bombarded by inflation and mm -hmm. price increases. And I think they're expecting there's going to be some. And I think there has to be some. Mm. I think there has to be some. It's just a question of how much can you push it? Yeah. But they're going to go to their neighborhood farm stand hoping that inflation hasn't gone there yet. <laughs> yeah, we will get that too. I know. <laughs> well, good update, least. I mean, <laughs> thank you for the update. Thank you for the update. <laughs> so she's supposed to like be back in touch this summer um, as she knows more about like. Yeah, she's just going to investigate more <laughs> about oh, what she can do. One thing I did want to mention, I'm not sure you're all aware of, that uh, trailers are allowed in Concord for agricultural housing. How do you deal with septic? You have to put septic in. You have to put a septic system. You can't do yeah. a thing where you pump. You have to pump it to some place or else put a system in. But you, you could theoretically, you could have trailers and a holding tank and you could pump it and truck it out. I suppose. Yeah. Because that might be cheaper in some circumstances for a short period hey, of time yeah. than installing a septic system. Yeah, if it's a short season, it might be. Mm. We, we do get asked pretty frequently if we would let somebody, but. You get tiny house people yeah. asking you. All the can... time. Like, yeah, we get that too. Like, but how do you tie into a septic system, you know? Then we always have one or two people that are gonna wanna work in the farm and they wanna know if they can set a tent up in the back. Totally, yep. Well, I'm amazed how many emails I get about that. All right. We ready to move on to other business? I have a piece of other business and that Joe is officially reappointed to the Ag Committee as associate member by the select board. Great. Uh, he's Congratulations. official. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, some seniority. <laughs> <laughs> the other thing is I did get an email from um, uh, I can't remember her name now, but somebody who works in the town who was, uh, there's several of us who are delinquent and when that we have not gotten um, sworn in. Uh, and that's partially a result of the pandemic and that the town was shut down, the town hall was shut down. So nobody was really getting sworn in for a little while. And that includes myself. So <laughs> um, I will email everybody who uh, needs to do that. Um, the other thing is there are some people who still need to do their ethics. Um, either for the first time or as a renewal. So you should have all gotten an email link to that training and the little quiz thing. Um, but if you haven't done it yet, it does not take that long. It took me maybe 15 minutes um, and it's pretty easy. So uh, just a reminder, we gotta do that one too. And the other thing is, I believe it is the time of year where we get to decide if we want new chairs or a new clerk or Or if you're stuck with me. <laughs> Seems to me things are working out pretty well. <laughs> I, I do think there is a, I, I won't say tradition, but I do think 
committees in general are encouraged to rotate chairs and rotate well, officers. Not too often, that, though. <laughs> exactly. That, I'm sorry, Emily. Well, I missed it, Steve. Would you say it again? Oh, yeah, I just said not too often. Oh, not too often. <laughs> when you have a good thing, don't mess with me. I, I th yes, yes. And I also think that it shares the burden. It's really instructive to be chair um, and you only do it for a year. And um, I, I, I think it is a good practice. I don't know how formally it's part of the town's process, but, uh, but, I, but I think it, at the very least, it's a strong encouragement. And, and, and I would say based on my experience that it's, it's a good practice to follow. Don't, don't burn out your, your good people like Liza. She, she can come around, you know, in five years again. He doesn't even live in Concord. I don't even live in Concord. <laughs> <laughs> Coming to you from Maynard. <laughs> well, why don't we uh, put that on the list for next week? Dan, I mean, next, ne next. Next time? Okay. <laughs> Dan for chair. <laughs> <laughs> well and and Melissa, the other thing yeah. is off i just got off of taking the minutes though <laughs> i think that one we've typically hung on to someone willing to do the minutes until <laughs> no. no. rotates too yeah. i am it's like, uh, I mean, like this, this time, I just, uh, you know, this time of year, it's kind of hard, but. Well, Dan could be chair and Joe could do the minutes. Oh, well, I don't know oh. about the chair part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just brainstorming. Okay. We have limited uh. people to rotate. Steve's been chair and minutes many times. But Happy's been chair too, right? Happy was chair for a couple of years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And you were too, Emily, weren't you? I was. And and uh, Brian reminded me that Happy and I were co-chairs. And, you know, Liza and Melissa have been co-chairs. That That's certainly another option. Right. I like having a co-chair. I have enjoyed being Melissa's co-chair. <laughs> yeah, I do think it'd be a lot for one person. It does help spread out some of the burden. Do we want to talk about this next month? Should we all marinate on how we feel? Yeah, I move we bring it up next okay. month. I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Does anybody else have any other business? Public comment. We're looking at our next meeting, it would be June 9th. Does that sound right to everybody? Sounds good. I move we adjourn. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> All right. Ole. <laughs> all right. Thank you, everybody. Very, very much. And uh, we'll see you all on June 9th. Sounds Thank good. Thank you. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.